going on guys? Big Mets here, finally checking in on YouTube. I think it's been about a year since uh, we were on this page and definitely been a little bit of an inconsistent year with uh, the posting on, on all platforms, but I am trying to get back. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely been a more challenging season than what I was anticipating, but I think it's not fair to only share the good. You gotta share a little bit of the tough stuff too. So anyways, I want to come on here and have this be a little bit of a preface to what's to come, which, it, which is a lot more YouTube content, a lot more videos, a lot more inside the daily life of what I'm doing, what Jeannie's doing, what training's looking like, what our goals are, what our missions are, and a little bit of you know my unique journey in this sport. And I think, um, you know, I, I feel like the, the path that I've had to take to get to where I am and, and the path that I'll continue to take to where I want to go is just a little bit different than everyone else. And I think that this page is meant to motivate, it's meant to inspire, um, and it's also meant to share the reality of the situation. And so anyways, that's what I'm aiming to do. That's what I want to be better at going forward. So we're going to be working on putting together some higher quality videos, but I just wanted to come on here, update everyone as to what's been going on in the last 12 months, because you haven't seen me on this page and I don't think I've shared that much on, on Instagram or, or elsewhere. Um, so I think a good place to start would be the high point and low point of last season, the high point definitely being a, w a win at 70.3 Oregon. In addition to my five other podium finishes, those were all really successful 70.3 events, but a uh, big low at Ironman Lake Placid with um, you know leading the race late in the marathon and crumbling to finish fourth. So that was a real, real challenge. Um, and that was sort of the beginning of my injury journey. Um, I started to have some lingering Achilles pain uh, around that time and it just sort of got progressively worse. Um, through August and September, had to take the first time off in my career uh, due to injury around that time. And so was struggling with the Achilles, but sort of downplaying it to myself and, and everyone who was working with me at the time. And um, yeah, from there I continued to train and had decent results at Augusta and Waco with podium finishes. And then um, I ended up preparing for Ironman Arizona and got COVID, um, but that forced me to stop and get my Achilles looked at properly. And so from there, um, I went and got an MRI and that showed a partial tear in my Achilles tendon. So anyways, fast forward about six months of rehab, super slow process for me to get my Achilles healed. It took me about 12 weeks of no running rehab every single day, every, you know, sort of rest and recovery protocol that you could imagine I did to get this thing healed up, but it just took forever. Um, so yeah, I took 12 weeks off running and sort of slowly introduced things back in March. And I really thought during that rehab process that I was going to be able to come right back and hit the ground running with, with decent form. You know, I was on the elliptical quite a lot. You might've seen that cycling a ton, swimming a ton in the gym every day, like just doing a, a bunch of stuff, but actually getting out there on the race course in May, um, kicking off things with a 10th place in St. George wasn't really, um, I didn't feel like I necessarily had the fitness I was hoping for. So I definitely felt a bit behind the eight ball. Um, but yeah, things were starting to, to click a bit. Um, but then again, I think, you know, that was mostly from an injury, the injury perspective. I felt like I was over finally starting to overcome that, get decent momentum on my run training. And around that time I made my first coaching change of the season. Um, and I decided to leave the JD crew, which was a really challenging, um, yeah, decision for me to make, but you know, I'd been with the crew for, for, coming up on five years. And I think you just need a change in stimulus sometimes and a change in environment. So, um, you know, the fad was self coaching at the time and with my background in coaching and exercise physiology, I felt like that was a good move. Um, and I did that through Ironman Coeur d'Alene where I came third. Um, but I didn't really feel like I had a super high level of performance there. Continued the self coaching through, um, main 70.3 where I came third as well. And then the last minute call up to the PTO event in Milwaukee, I came last and I, I just felt like I was really not performing at a super high level. Um, and that, that was less so reflected in the race results and more so reflected in just how I was, how I was performing and, and acting on the day to day. I just wasn't really happy with things that, that PTO event in Milwaukee. I feel like that was definitely a big low. Um, from there, I still had my eyes set on Ironman Canada and Penticton and I was planning to self coach myself through that. But then when that race got canceled, it really forced me to kind of look things look at myself in the mirror and say, what am I doing here? Uh, do I know as much as I, I think I know? Am I, am I smart enough or, or skilled enough to do this? And I think 
maybe the answer is yes. I feel like I know a lot about triathlon. I've got a ton of experience and I know a lot about physiology and I'm a student of the sport and a fan of the sport. So I feel like I'm really in touch with those sort of things, but I am super type A and a little bit OCD and a little bit um, obsessive when it comes to especially my own training. So I felt like I was spending the majority of every day stressing over a 10 minute interval versus a 15 minute interval and the training volume and, and all of these things just, it came to a point where I needed to hire a coach. So from there I hired David Tilbury, um, who helped me sort of, yeah, rally the, the troops for the final four weeks going into Ironman Maryland, which was my deferral race from, uh, Ironman Canada. And I just felt like I was losing steam. Um, yeah, I think I'm the, I'm the last one to admit when things are, are going poorly, but just psychologically, I felt like everything, all the challenges that I had to, um, deal with this year and, and, the yeah, the coaching changes and, and all of just the, the ups and downs, you know, Jeannie was really struggling at times throughout the summer. And I think just, yeah, stressed and an unhappy athlete isn't necessarily a fast one. And this was the first time in my career where I didn't necessarily have that, that super stoke that I was hoping, um, that, I, that usually just comes supernaturally to me. Um, and so, yeah, I think tough, again, tough little thing for, for me to admit, but, um, I think it's important to just recognize where you're at. And so, yeah, I, I, I kept on pressing as I tend to do, but I caught myself, um, just had a real bad workout a couple weeks ago and just sort of decided to not keep pressing for the season anymore. I took a little bit of a mini break. I was going to do Ironman Florida, said, nah, let's just move on. And, uh, yeah, took a week off training and, um, yeah, now I'm kind of rolling back into it with just some baseline stuff, doing some fitness tests. And I'm, and I'm hoping I can kind of, I, I know I'm still in decent shape and, um, I've trained so much this season, so I've only raced three times, but I just feel like it's uh, four times if you count the PTO. Um, is it, yeah, I just feel like I've under raced a bit and, and overtrained, And so I want to, um, just spend the, maybe a little time training and, and maybe we can rally for some races at the end of, at the end of the season, whether that's at Indian Wells or, or elsewhere, probably going to be a 70.3 as we gear up for big Ironmans, uh, in 2024. So anyways, that's my update on here. Um, I appreciate all you guys. I appreciate the love and support and, and everything. Um, yeah, if you guys want to see anything specific on YouTube, just drop a comment down below. Like I've got some ideas on stuff that I want to give you guys a look into, but if there's just very specific stuff, we're going to try and touch on it. Um, I want to just do some like day in the life videos, some training videos, some nutrition videos, and really just take those, you know, the 15 years of experience that I've got doing triathlon and, um, yeah, give you guys some of that knowledge, but also just give you an inside look as to what it takes to, to be a pro who's trying to win triathlons and more at the end of the day, do a little bit more than that. Just, just, um, explore every possible, um, avenue to, to get the most out of yourself. And really at the end of the day, I do want to win, but I also want to just see what I'm capable of and kind of push those limits and find, find out what I'm made of. So anyways, uh, again, thanks very much. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully a little bit better edit and, uh, quality and, uh, thank you guys very much. Back up on my grizzly, on my bar shit, yeah, yeah Ask me how I'm doing, doing awesome, yeah, yeah Fake ass energy, that's where you lost